In the middle of the night, professional assassin Jason Renshaw drives to his next victim's location and parks outside a toy factory to conduct his first surveillance. Inside, famous toy maker Hans Morris is at the factory checking on the production of his latest toy. He makes sure everything is running smoothly and leaves behind a limited edition box containing a beautiful fairy music box that plays a soothing melody. Charmed by the fairy, Hans takes her away and closes the factory door behind him. He then heads to his office, which he must access with a special key card. There, he looked at the picture of his mother, who had signed it lovingly and winced slightly. When Jason saw Hans in his office, he was getting ready to go to work. He had covered his shoes, put on gloves, and made sure his gun was equipped with a silencer. He also wore a mask and a hat to hide his face. Just then, the security guard heard the noise and left his office to find a phone at the entrance with a message that it was a bomb about to explode. As the countdown begins, the panicked guard uses his keycard to open the door, then grabs the phone with the intention of throwing it away. However, Jason surprises him and quickly puts him to sleep with a tranquilizer dart. He then takes the phone and turns it off before stealing the guard's key. After taking the dart and hiding the body, Jason enters and checks the security cameras, only to notice another guard approaching. Jason turns off all the cameras with the stolen key and chases after the remaining guard, shooting him with another tranquilizer. He then jumped at the guard and grabbed him and threw him to the ground, holding him down until the sedative took effect. Jason also hid this body and went upstairs, opening the CEO's office with the security key card. Han stood up as soon as he saw him and barely had time to groan before Jason shot him several times, quickly killing him. Jason then checks Han's pulse to make sure he is dead and sees his mother's photo frame shatter when the body falls and notices a strange signature. He also finds the music box and listens to it before taking it with him. A while later, Jason boards the plane that takes him home. He uses the disposable phone to send a text message to the person who hired him, asking them to confirm Han's death on the news and send money. When the passenger next to him asks if he has any gum, Jason opens his bag to get it and is surprised by the fairy, who starts to look creepy. The remaining passenger is confused by his reaction, but Jason smiles normally as he hands him the gum. Hours later at the airport, Jason sees on the news that Han's death has become public knowledge and the police know a killer did it. Jason then rides the escalator and is frightened by a children's toy carried by a little girl. He is so upset that he has to look away. Jason eventually returns to his building and can't help but notice another toy at the front desk, also belonging to Han's brand. When Jason returns to his apartment, he sees the stuffed duck he left in the pool, which worries him so much that he decides to leave it on the balcony. After taking a shower, Jason takes the fairy music box out of his bag and puts it in a glass cabinet where he keeps mementos of each person he has killed. He then checks his computer and sees that his payment has been made and that he has another job lined up for him in London. But first Jason decides to take a nap. In the evening, Jason wakes up to the sound of his doorbell and checks the security cameras to see the receptionist drop a package on his doorstep. Jason took it in and noticed that there was no sender information, but he noticed the little face was the same as the one he had seen in the picture of Han's mother. Using a knife, Jason began to open the package very carefully, thinking it was a trap. After slowly cutting the paper, he was surprised to find a box containing toy soldiers with weapons and even their vehicles. The brand logo indicates that this is Han's factory and there is a sticker announcing a surprise reward. Board. Again, moving very carefully, Jason opened the box a bit and used a flashlight to make sure it wasn't a bomb. He then opened the box completely and confirmed that it was just a bunch of toys. Jason was confused, glanced at the paper again to look at the small face and still suspicious so he also looked closer at a soldier. However, he didn't find it strange so he dropped it and went to his bar to get a soda. Suddenly, Jason heard a noise and saw that the toy box had fallen off the counter. Worried again, Jason stared at him for a moment before checking the other side of the counter for anything unusual. There was nothing there so he turned to the trunk and was shocked to find it empty. Just then, the curtain shook and Jason rushed to look behind him but again, he found nothing. Then, a light turned off by itself and when Jason went to check, he found that the cable to the outlet had been cut. He then saw that the light in the kitchen was also off. As he went to investigate, he felt something sting his leg. Jason jumped back and grabbed the mysterious object that stabbed him, only to discover that it was a toy military weapon. Jason then bent down to look under the table and chairs and saw something shooting at him with small bullets. He immediately moved to cover as he touched the small scars, confirming that the bullets were small but still caused damage. As he tried to look back, the fire flared up again and even a small rocket flew out, hitting his leg with an explosion hot enough to burn his pants and flesh. Jason rolled on the floor hiding behind a step and as the fire continued to rage, he rushed to hide in the bathroom. After checking his wound in the large mirror, Jason grabbed a smaller mirror and opened the door just enough to see. The fire continued to spread, gradually consuming all the lights and electronics in the apartment. One rocket even touched a light bulb and started a small fire. 
Suddenly the bullets stopped, only for Jason to finally be noticed by the enemy. Another missile was fired and destroyed the mirror, causing the fragments to injure Jason. He immediately closed the door and removed the fragments from his skin, noticed that he now had more wounds. Since this bathroom was adjacent to his bedroom, he rushed to the bedside table and took out the weapon that he had hidden there. Then Jason came out and started shooting at the enemy who was hiding under the sofa. Bullets continued to hit him, but this time he dodged the incoming missiles. Quickly crossing the apartment, Jason went to his bar and drank straight from the bottle before grabbing another hidden weapon. He opened fire again, this time approaching the sofa and pushing other furniture aside. When the enemy was no longer firing, he pulled the cushions off the couch and began firing at the enemy while screaming. When he ran out of ammo, he grabbed his previous weapon and abruptly turned the sofa to finally see his enemies, the toy soldiers in the box. Some of them are dead, but the survivors are regrouping and gathering vehicles and weapons. Jason stops on two of them before the others open fire again, forcing him to return fire with more shots. Meanwhile, some soldiers manage to get to their helicopter, which suddenly takes off and starts firing missiles. Jason ducks just in time and the missiles start destroying his bar with small but powerful explosions. Then the helicopters fly right into Jason's face and hands, slashing him with their blades and forcing him to drop his gun. Jason quickly got back in his seat and took out one of the helicopters, but that only gave the others the chance to start firing missiles at him again. Jason had no choice but to return to the bathroom. After locking the door, he looked in the mirror and was shocked to see how much he was bleeding. With shaking hands, he cleaned the wound and disinfected it, causing him to groan in pain. He also drank some water to calm himself down before carefully bandaging his hand. Suddenly, a rocket blew a hole in door and a toy helicopter flew inside. Jason thought quickly and used a towel to catch him, then threw him to the ground and stomped on him angrily. Just then, another helicopter arrived and fired a rocket, but the explosion was not enough to stop Jason. He grabbed his gun and fired, sending the helicopter flying out of the bathroom. Jason made sure the helicopter was not in front of the door, then he grabbed a towel and threw the broken toys down the toilet before flushing. Now he could use the towel to plug the hole in the door. Hearing noises inside the toilet, Jason flushed again, but the clicking continued. He banged on the lid to no avail, so he also grabbed the hairdryer and threw it down the toilet. The resulting short circuit killed the soldiers, but also turned off the bathroom lights. Not knowing what else to do, Jason waited. He found a needle and thread to sew up the cut on his leg. After drinking some water, he noticed some mosquito repellent had fallen out of the cupboard and put it in his pocket as a sidearm. Just then, he saw something moving near the door, and he was about to shoot when he saw a piece of paper attached to it. After the soldiers left, Jason grabbed the paper and found the word surrender, so he wrote an insult on it before throwing it back at. He then moved the napkin to look outside and found the soldiers firing a cannon. Jason dodged just in time as the cannonball blew an even bigger hole in the door. The gunfire continued to rain down, destroying more and more of the door until there was barely any wood left. Jason had no choice but to climb out the window, which placed him on a very narrow ledge above the city. Carefully, Jason rounded the ledge and hid behind a wall just before the helicopter came in so he wouldn't be seen. Jason then continued forward, very slowly, towards another window. At that point, the helicopter found him and shot him in the face before running out of ammo. Jason tried not to fall and returned fire, finding himself out of ammo. However, just one shot was enough to cause the helicopter to burst into flames and crash. Jason then continued to move around the edge of the building while nursing his very painful ear wound. Holding onto a tube, he moved around the building and eventually fell, but luckily landed on his balcony. Hiding behind a gate, he looked inside and saw the soldiers gathering to come up with a new plan with their last cannon. Trying to think of something, Jason looked at the gate and found the duck, a lighter, and a fire extinguisher. A few seconds later, the duck appeared swimming in the lake. The soldiers approach it to investigate, leaving the door area clear for Jason to enter. He surprises the soldiers by using only the fire extinguisher on them, allowing the second team to approach him from behind, quickly opening fire and destroying one of the mementos in the cabinet. Jason struggles with the lighter, but eventually lights it and combines it with the insect repellent, creating a flamethrower which he uses to burn the soldiers. The toy truck eventually crashes into the furniture and Jason screams in satisfaction before lighting the remaining soldiers again. Having done enough damage, he grabs a knife and cuts all the soldiers into pieces. He also stabbed one just to see it writhe in pain. Suddenly, the soldiers in foam shot the duck down when the fire extinguisher finally ran out. Before they could shoot Jason, he hit them with their own box. Thinking that it was finally over, Jason gathered all the broken toys and examined them closely, but he found nothing special about them. He counted them all and checked the numbers on the box to make sure no one had escaped. Then he threw them in the trash and turned it on to turn the toys into dust. After cleaning the wound properly, Jason went into the pool to relax. Suddenly, he heard a noise and felt something hurt his arm. Arm. He immediately got out of the pool and looked into the water but saw nothing strange. The cut on his wrist was quite deep so Jason wrapped it in a towel before hiding in his room. There, he tried to sew up the wound 
but his hands were shaking so much that he couldn't even thread a needle. In the end, Jason just bandaged the fresh wound and got dressed before heading out. Still keeping an eye on his surroundings, he grabbed the emergency number magnet from the refrigerator and started walking backwards to get out of the apartment without being attacked by surprise. Jason pressed the elevator button to start it up, but he couldn't relax because he heard something moving on the roof. Then the noise started to move, indicating that something had entered the elevator mechanism. Suddenly, a gunshot rang out and the control panel exploded, causing the lights to go out and the elevator to stop. Then, the hatch in the ceiling opened, revealing another soldier. This one was larger and stronger than the others. As the soldier jumped in, Jason tried to chase him with his small flashlight, but he moved too fast and started to cut off his own leg. He also jumped and made a deep cut on his other arm, which Jason quickly covered with his belt to stop the bleeding. When Jason turned around, he saw soldier growling at him from the control panel before he escaped through the hatch. Just then, two explosions occurred at the top of the elevator, causing it to shake. Desperate, Jason jumped several times until he reached the trap door and climbed out as well, finding himself trapped between two floors. Suddenly, another explosion rang out below him and he saw the soldier above him preparing to kill him. Jason also saw the second elevator coming and jumped onto it to escape. As the elevator descends, Jason jumps in and lands painfully on the ground. He presses the button thinking he is safe, but the guard has followed him and is hiding on his shoe and is now climbing on top of him. He growls at him and Jason growls back before the guard starts stabbing him, but is quickly pushed away. Soon, the elevator reaches the front desk and the doors open, but Jason is unconscious. The guard proceeds to finish his work, but discovers that Jason is faking it. The little boy grabs the toy and pushes it to the edge where the door is about to close. The little man reaches out to stop them, but he is not strong enough and the door still closes, crushing him to death. Then Jason hears a beeping sound and looks closer at the toy's body, discovering a bomb in its pocket. He laughs in defeat before the bomb detonates, causing a huge explosion that sends flames shooting through the tunnel. Back at the apartment, the sticker peels off the box to reveal a surprise reward written by Han's mother, a commando, and a thermonuclear weapon. In the classroom, the fairy plays her song. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, leave a comment about your favorite movie, and we will make it next. Thanks for watching.